11 o'clock, the meeting will come to order. I'm Grace Lesperance, Cascade Township Supervisor. Clerk Slater, please call the roll. Trustee McDonald. Here. Treasure Pierce. Here. Trustee Kessel. Here. Trustee Shipley. Here. Trustee Nordhook. Here. Clerk Slater here. Supervisor Lesperance. Here. Thank you. Please rise if possible for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, a nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Article three, approval of agenda. Is there a motion? Shipley makes a motion to approve. Is there a second? A second. Motion by Trustee Shipley, supported by Clerk Slater, to approve the motion or to approve the agenda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Article four: Presentations. We have no presentations this evening. Article five: Public comment. Before we open the meeting to public comments, uh, we have two quick updates. First, the community PFAS forum that I mentioned at the last meeting is tentatively scheduled for me, or excuse me, for mid-April, but an exact date and specific information will be announced soon. And second, Assistant Manager Fast is present tonight and has been briefed by Deputy Diepa. He's out of town but Assistant Manager Fast will give us a brief update on the vehicular and other thefts that had been um, occurring recently and that Deputy Diepa spoke about last month. Assistant Manager Fast. Thank you, Supervisor Lesperance. Um, as you all know, the Sheriff's Department put together an action plan to begin addressing some of the property crimes that were occurring in Cascade. These were almost exclusively crimes of opportunity involving um, vehicle break-ins of cars that were unlocked, um, but the Sheriff's Department put together a plan that involved putting some extra patrols in our area. They began to utilize some two-man units to patrol neighborhoods. Sometimes they were using unmarked cars, and they began using um, very highly visible patrols on 28th Street. Um, they've also been making a lot of extra traffic stops. Um, between this and their public campaign that we've also helped with, with the Lock It or Lose It, um, this has been a pretty successful venture. Um, there's also some covert operations that they were working on that I can't share because then they wouldn't be covert. Um, but they've been pretty successful um, in getting those numbers down. So um, they're very proud of the results. And they also wanted um, the board to know that through some Cracker Jack detective work, they have apprehended the second suspect in the homicide that occurred outside of the Clarion. So they are very proud of that as well. Thank you, Assistant Manager Fast. We will now proceed to the public comments for anything not on the agenda uh, already scheduled for a public hearing. Comments are limited to three minutes. And I would note that the public hearing for amendment to the East Imports PUD ordinance that is for the construction of the new car dealership on 28th Street is on tonight's agenda. Deputy Manager Fast, do we have any public comment? Um, thank you, Supervisor Lesperance. Um, if anyone wishes to address the board, please raise your hand and your microphone will be unmuted at that time. If you're joining us via telephone, please press star nine and you will be given the same opportunity. Please make sure you state your name and address clearly for the record. And we do have some raised hands. Our first commenter is Marianne Schramm. Good evening, Ms. Schramm. Please proceed. I live at 2879 Berwick Drive. Uh, I live in the Cascade Woods Neighborhood Association. I am also president of that association and have been involved with it for a number of years. Our association has worked with Pastor Phil and his congregation to improve the gardens on the hill as an entrance to our neighborhood. Since the sale last year, there has been no upkeep of the expense of the landscaping. While we haven't surveyed our neighborhood recently, 
regarding the landscaping, the beautiful entrance of our neighborhood is important to all who live here. We are very interested in your proposed plan to purchase that from perhaps a park. We have no uh, idea either way if it be a park or home, but we are interested in making it a safe and beautiful entrance to our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thank you. Okay, the next resident is Trish. Good evening, ma'am, please proceed. Hi, my name is Trish Hilkema. I live at 3130 Howlett Drive. Um, I am also calling in to uh, talk about the um, sale of the church on the hill. I guess that's how we refer to it. Um, and I would like to propose or like the neighborhood to serious or the, actually the township to uh, seriously look at the possibility of buying that, turning it into a park, possibly using the actual church building as a community um, uh, venue, I guess, for lack of a better word, that people could rent out for parties and that type of thing. I did put this on Neighbor Next Door, and I did email all of the people on the township board with the people's comments. There were 82 comments on this issue. People were, I would say, 99% um, excited about that. I think the only comment somebody made was just how would it get paid for as far as the tax thing, but people were very excited about it. They, they um, mentioned things like having a skating rink in the wintertime, um, possibly having like Friday night bonfires where people could come and play games, that type of thing. Um, I know when my kids were young, I would have loved to have had a park where I could have taken them. I used to have to wait till Pine Ridge School closed for the day before we could go there and use their playground equipment. So um, yeah, I would just really like to um, really support that. And I know that there's definitely neighborhood support uh, for that as well. Thank you, Ms. Hill, come on. There are no further hands at this time, Supervisor Lesperance. Manager Swayze, I think we had a couple emails from residents who requested that their comments be read into the record. Yep, uh, so I just have a couple here that I'm going to read. Uh, actually, the first one I have is from uh, Mrs. Halkama that you just heard from. Uh, so I would just reiterate uh, basically what she had just mentioned. Uh, this email was also sent to all of the board members uh, and does have the screenshots and the links to uh, the next door comments. Um, the other comment that uh, we received that asked to be read into public comments is from Melody Vanderweide. Melody lives as a Cascade resident that lives at 2600 Castaview Drive Southeast since 2005. Uh, she says, please read the following comment into the Wednesday, February 24th, 2021 Cascade Township Board meeting public comments. The Church on the Hill property should be turned into a township park. In every survey I've answered for Cascade Township, I've highlighted the fact that there is no easily accessible children's play equipment for the residents of Cascade Woods. Leslie Tazel Park is lovely but has no play equipment. Parents, including myself, are not comfortable letting kids ride bikes to Leslie Tassel Park because of needing to cross Cascade Road as well as the Cascade Road Bridge over the Thornapple River. Right now, Cascade has the rare opportunity to preserve green space at this property while also directly enhancing the lives of 400 plus families in the Cascade Woods neighborhood. Adjoining neighborhoods would also be able to access this property and benefit from the preservation of the space. This action would be a forward step toward making the township a better place for families and would immediately impact the lives of many residents. Please take up this topic. I support any resolution that is in favor of this property becoming a park. Thank you. Welcome. Any other public comment before we move on? That concludes this portion of public comment. Article six, approval of consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? So moved. Support. Motion, motion by trustee Kessel, supported by trustee Kessel, uh, excuse me, Shipley to approve the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Article seven, financial actions. No financial actions are noted on the agenda. Article eight, unfinished business. Is there any unfinished business? Hearing none, we will proceed. Article nine, new business. 
First up, item 017-2021, public hearing for amendment to the East Imports PUD ordinance for the construction of a new car dealership at 6115 28th Street. Is there a motion to open public hearing? Motion to open the public hearing. Support. Was that trustee? Kipley. Kessel. So that's a motion by trustee uh, Kessel supported by trustee Shipley to open this matter for public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Do we have planner Hillbrands here tonight to give us a brief overview? Yes, would you like me to give that now? Yes, please, thank you. Yeah, thank you. So in your packet, you should have the application and site plan for the construction of a new car dealership at 6115 28th Street, um, as well as the proposed amendment to the East Imports PUD in which the dealership would be located. Um, the applicant is requ requesting final plan approval to amend the existing PUD ordinance to include that parcel there at 6115 28th Street. Um, that lot's located on the north side of 28th Street across from Lucerne Drive. Uh, the proposed building would be approximately 37,800 square feet um, with about 367 parking spaces there. Uh, the plans have been reviewed by our fire chief and also our township engineer um, whose comments are included in our engineer's letter, which is in your packet as well. Um, you'll see that there are a few amendments being proposed to the PUD and those are in, in your packet there. The Planning Commission reviewed the plans and held a public hearing on this matter at their December 7 meeting and has recommended approval of both the site plan with noted staff recommendations and the amendment to the PUD ordinance. Um, I do want to know that since that recommendation, the applicants continue to work on those conditions. They have submitted the revised photometric plan and they've completed the lot application as well. And I believe the applicants also in attendance as well tonight to help answer any questions that the board might have. Thank you. I have a couple of questions for Brian. Uh, Brian, the photometric plan, um, do you know if, 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 will they be turning off lights at night? I know we get a lot of uh, light pollution and a lot of organizations, you know, will turn their lights off at 10 or 11 at night. Do we have any feeling for that? I don't know if I've heard from them. We've gotten the revised plans in to make sure that it's below our maximum lighting levels that we have. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't heard of their specific lighting plans. It might be a better question for the applicant at least. Okay, and one other thing regarding, I, I read a lot about uh, the water retention, which is a, a, a big deal. And it's really become that the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. And I see they meet all the standards for water retention and detention, but a lot of the plans are for you know 100 year events. And we're finding now, like in the last 10 years, we're having 100 year events two or three times per decade. So are we really comfortable, are engineers comfortable with the, because when you have these large parking lots, there's huge volumes of water that just don't have places to go. Sure, I know our engineer did have, you know, a bit of a back and forth figuring everything out. They've got an underwater, underground detention system, you'll see in kind of the Northwest part of their parking lot. And everything that I've heard from our township engineers that they are comfortable with the amount of, um, detention and stores that they have in there. So I haven't had any indication from our township engineer, at least that um, they have any worry about them being able to provide enough detention there. Okay. But they're, they're, they're usually really good and very cognizant of the problems that we have. So I just wanted to make sure because we're, again, we're seeing so many of these hundred year events happen multiple times in a decade that mm -hmm. maybe our old standards need to be revised. So just, just sure. a question. Yeah. Brian, um, do you know, is this a, is it a new, a different car dealership or are they just going to move one of the uh, existing cars uh, sales into this facility? Yeah, so it's going to be a Subaru dealership. And from my understanding, it's that they've been so busy at the current building that they're, this is kind of an expansion of that. So I believe they'll still use the existing Subaru building as well. And then this is a new building for them. Um, and they can um, correct me if I'm wrong, but that was my understanding is that they'll, this is kind of a 
new Subaru building just because they've been so busy at their current location. So they're not taking on a different car, a different model car or any, anything. It's just an expansion of the existing. Correct. And to Tom's question, when they did this the last time, there was quite a bit of time spent on the water retention because as he said, there was a lot more surface and we spent a lot of time talking about that. As far as we know, has that existing retention system that's on site been effective in controlling the runoff into Schoolhouse Creek? I believe so. At least I can say that I've never heard of any problems or complaints coming about the site, at least. Thank you. Brian, uh, Timmy here. It appears that there's about 30, 35,000 square feet of new parking lot way in the back by those retention ponds. Is, has that been figured into that water capture? Yeah, kind of to the northeast of that, I think. Right by, the, right by the retention ponds. Oh, sure. Yep. Yeah, there's an existing, that's actually an existing parking lot back there that went in a year or two ago. And so that was um, taken into account for that lot. And then they have this new underground system for this new parking lot. And so it should all be accommodated for um, between this new underground system and then any existing detention on that site as well. Thank you. Mr. Hildebrands, if that were to become a problem, what's the what's our enforcement process? Yeah, so if we get started getting complaints about water cooling or something like that, I imagine our first step would be to have our engineer go out there and observe and first make sure that everything was built to the specifications they have here. And I guess if they're if they are, we might have to do some kind of reevaluation and see if there would need to be some expansion or I don't know if there'd have to be a change or ordinance that'd be a much larger conversation if we have to look at our stormwater ordinance but it'd be have the township engineer go take a look and then they would make really recommendations of what the best way would be to solve that. Thank you. Supervisor Lesprince I do have a raised hand that may be the applicant. Okay please proceed. Hi, can you hear me all right? We can. Okay, this is Brandon Simon at Niederveld. Um, the civil engineer who put together the, the plans and stormwater calculations and just wanted to weigh in to help uh, um, with some of the stormwater concerns and questions. Um, so the, the parking lot immediately to the north of us that was done a couple years ago, um, that has its own standalone detention basin and then the site to the west that's the existing dealer also has a detention basin. Um, and then our site will have a 100 year basin um, that's gonna function via infiltration. And then just to future proof that uh, detention basin in the event that 10 years from now or 20 years from now, the infiltration capacity is diminished, uh, we're gonna put in a, an outlet control structure also uh, that ties to there's an existing, actually a county drain that runs north-south through this site, um, a large diameter pipe. So we're gonna have a hard connection to that pipe that's capped uh, right now. And in the event that this detention system does have problems later on down the road, we've worked with the township engineer uh, to develop a system that will allow us to uncap that. And then we'll have a um, direct connection to the county drain and we can alleviate that problem if it comes up. County drain, excuse me, Brandon, that county drain, uh, that doesn't flow into Schoolhouse Creek? Uh, it flows north uh, into Charlevoix Woods and then east into a large uh, regional detention basin. So that's the, uh, the solution if that uh, retention pond doesn't uh, prove effective. Is that what you're saying? That's correct, yeah. So the site currently has no detention. Um, we're adding in a hundred year storm worth. And then just to future proof the site um, in the event that 20, 30 years down the road, 
the infiltration capacity is no longer there, which can happen on occasion if the um, underground detention systems aren't maintained properly or something like that. Um, we have a system in place that would allow us to um, rely on infiltration and a direct connection to the county drain. Um, and that's been approved by both the Township Engineers and the County Drain Commission. Um, on top of that, we do have, uh, we're working with Brian to get a stormwater maintenance agreement in place. Uh, and that would cover things like the yearly maintenance or maintenance as needed of the detention basin. Um, and so that would also prevent against failure down the road on that system. Okay, thank you. Yep. System Manager Bass, are there any other comments? There are no raised hands at this time, Supervisor Lesperance. There'd be no further public hearing. Oh, excuse me, sorry. Is there a motion? Yeah, I move we pull, close public hearing. Support. Support. The motion by Trustee McDonald, supported by Trustee Shipley. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Same item, section B, the board will now consider approval of the amendment to the East Imports PUD ordinance for the construction of a new car dealership at 6115 28th Street. Discussion? Or motion? Is that, is that uh, Brian, I'm sorry, uh, is that maintenance system? Is that already, that maintenance agreement already in place? That's one of the conditions that's included. So we'll just make sure we get that before a building permit is signed off on. Okay, thank you. I move that we have, uh, approve the amendment to the PUD subject to uh, any items that staff has recommended and still need to be completed. Support. I'll second it, sorry. Thank you. And Trustee Kessel, could you restate your motion? Please, yes. just so I don't butcher it. <laughs> to approve the amendment to the PUD to allow the uh, expansion of another car dealership on the site subject to the staff recommended uh, conditions if they haven't already been received. And that's a motion as stated by Trustee Kessel, supported by Trustee McDonald. Clerk Slater, please call the roll. Trustee Shipley. Yes. Trustee Kessel. Yes. Trustee McDonald. Yes. Trustee Nordhook. Yes. Treasure Pierce. Yes. Clerk Slater. Yes. Supervisor Lesbrance. Yes. Thank you. Motion carried unanimously. Item 018, 2021, Brownfield Redevelopment Appointments. Uh, based on their pursuant to the memo that's already in our packet, I rec I'm recommending the following appointments to the newly formed Brownfield Redevelopment Board, or board. Aaron Mead, who is currently already on our zoning Board of Appeals, Christopher Nordyke, who's currently a Planning Commissioner, Michelle Kalela, who is currently serving on our Downtown Development Authority, Catherine DeVries, who is a recognized local realtor, although not currently serving on any township boards or commissions, and then myself, Grace Lesperance, supervisor. Is there any discussion? Move to approve. Support. It's a motion by Trustee McDonald, supported by Trustee Kess, uh, Shipley, Shipley, to approve the Brownfield redevelopment appointments uh, mentioned previously. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> motion carried. Item 019-2021, consider resolution for street light replacement at 28th Street Southeast and westbound I-96 ramp. And Ms. Corhorn, if you could walk us through a brief overview. Yes, thank you. So we received uh, some correspondence from Consumers Energy um, a few weeks ago that they will re be replacing all the center suspension street lighting in the township and they will be replacing that with bracketed LED Cobra heads over the next few years. And they are doing this at no charge to the township. And so they sent us three locations that they consider a priority. 
and uh, 28th Street and westbound uh, I-96 ramp is one of those locations. So they gave us a couple different options. One, we could remove the lights completely. We could um, replace the center span with one Cobra head or with two Cobra heads. And so we opted for the one for two program, if you will, where they will replace the center span uh, light with two Cobra head lights at this intersection. And I did include in your packet the map, um, the design of the uh, intersection, but the new lights will be installed on 28th Street just west of the ramp. And uh, one light will be on the north side of the street. The other light will be on the south side of the street. And so in your packet, there are two resolutions. One um, discussing the um, removal of the center span light. And then the other resolution uh, addresses the installation of the Cobra heads. Um, it is a resolution tonight, and um, that is in your packet as well. Thank you. Is there any discussion or a motion? Motion made to replace a uh, street light at the recommendation of the staff, a consumer's power. It's a motion by Trustee Shipley to consider the resolution for the street light replacement at 28th Street and West Brown 190 or I-96, supported by Trustee Nordhook. Uh, clerks, oh, I'm sorry, Trustee Kessel. Clerk Slater, please call the roll. Trustee Kessel. Yes. Treasure Pierce. Yes. Trustee Nordhook. Yes. Trustee McDonald. Yes. Trustee Shipley. Yes. Clerk Slater. Yes. Supervisor Lesbritz. Yes. Thank you. Motion carried. Item 020, 2021. Consider resolution for a street light replacement at Kraft and 36th Street. Ms. Corhorn, is there any additional uh, overview needed right now? There really isn't, um, just same pretty much. We opted for the one for two program for this intersection as well. Um, so two Cobra heads will go up in place of the center span. So um, again, two resolutions in your packet addressing the removal of the center span and the installation of the um, Cobra heads. I like the cost. Oh, Treasurer Pierce, can you restate that? It was hard to hear. I like the cost. <laughs> With that, I, I move to approve the resolution. Okay. Support. 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 Motion by Trustee McDonald, supported by Trustee Shipley, to approve the resolution as written. Uh, Clerk Slater, could you please call the roll? Treasurer Pierce. Yes. Trustee Kessel. Yes. Trustee McDonald. Yes. Trustee Nordhook. Yes. Trustee Shipley. Yes. Clerk Slater. Yes. Supervisor Lesbron. Yes. Thank you. So motion carried. Thank you. Item 021, 2021. Issuance of an RFP. So that's a request for proposal for township legal services. At the personnel and finance committee meeting on February 10th, Treasurer Pierce, Trustee Kessel, and myself unanimously approved the recommendation that the board approve a request for proposal or an RFP for legal services. Mr. Swayze, can you provide an overview of the RFP uh, process and discussion that you've prepared for the board already? Certainly, thank you, Supervisor Lesperin. So um, you all should be familiar that we're currently served by Varnum LLP to provide general counsel legal services to the township, as well as some specialized services. Attorney John Huff has served as the township attorney, uh, while various other Varnum attorneys have represented the township in their areas of expertise. Uh, in addition to Varnum, we utilize other firms uh, in the past and currently for cases of specialized needs. Most recently, we utilized Dickinson Wright for DDA and bond council work, and we've utilized Bloom Sluggett for planning land, uh, planning land use lawsuit, where Varnum has had to recuse itself due to a conflict uh, and also uh, for special counsel related to the Laraway Lake and Thorn Apple River Special Assessment District projects due to their subject matter expertise. Uh, so Law Weathers Varnum, 
uh, has served as a Township General Legal Counsel for a considerable amount of time. In 2010, uh, two attorneys that worked for Law Weathers that did a significant amount of work for the Township, Cliff Bloom and Crystal Morgan, uh, left Law Weathers uh, to help form Bloom Sluggett Morgan, which is the name of the, um, the firm at the time. Uh, at that time, the personnel committee considered issuing an RFP, but chose not to. Uh, and then in 2016, when Law Weathers was consolidated into Barnum, the township did issue a legal services RFP. At that time, we received seven responses from the 10 invitations that we sent out to bid. Uh, ultimately, at that time, the township chose to remain with Barnum. The initial cost for the services was $190 per hour. And then in 2020, the Township Board approved a request from Varnum to increase the hourly rate to $200. So as Supervisor Lesperance mentioned at the 2000, February 2020 Personnel and Finance Committee meeting, the committee reviewed the legal services RFP that was issued in 2016 and then made a recommendation to the Township Board that a new RFP be issued. So at the request of that committee, the RFP was prepared for consideration for the Township Board. Um, should the RFP be approved, I'm recommending the following timeline. So the request for proposals will be issued on March 1st. And those proposals will be due on April 8th, 2021. Uh, the personnel committee will evaluate the proposals the week uh, or at their April 14th meeting. Uh, if they want to do follow-up calls or interviews, they will do those the week of April 19th uh, and then forward a recommendation to the township board to be considered on April 28th. Uh, the beginning of the contract work will start with May 3rd, 2021, uh, and I am proposing a one-month overlap with our current firm should Barnum not be chosen for uh, township uh, attorney going forward. Uh, so should note in the RFP that there's a period of performance that goes until December 31st, 2025. Uh, that was similar to the last um, RFP where we had a basically a five-year period of performance as well. Uh, it'll also include a professional services agreement with the termination clause uh, where the agreement can be term terminated for any reason uh, with a predetermined amount of notice uh, by either party. So in the RFP, I do mention that the Personnel and Finance Committee will be responsible for evaluating the submitted proposals and make a recommendation to the Township Board uh, for a contract award uh, for consideration. Uh, typically for these RFPs, we don't put together any formal evaluation criteria, but we do mention in the RFP what we will be focusing on we'll, when we're evaluating them. So of course, we'll verify all of the information provided by the firm. We're looking for the completeness of proposal, the responsiveness to all elements outlined in the request for proposal, uh, the re experience and qualifications of the designated township attorney, as well as all of the team member attorneys that are identified. Uh, experience and results in performing the services desired by the township, uh, which will include a uh, references check as well. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, last but certainly not least, is a cost proposal that's most advantageous to the township. Uh, and I mentioned the committee uh, recommended this to the township board. So the issuance of the RFP really doesn't have any direct cost to the township, only staff time related to the issuance uh, in our current fiscal year we have budgeted approximately $50,000 over all of our departments for legal services, but the actual cost for legal services during a fiscal year can fluctuate greatly depending on the activities that we have during the year. Uh, and then should be noted that uh, some of the funds are utilized for special counsel outside of the scope of the general counsel. Uh, so with that, the Personnel and Finance Committee is recommending the Township Board approve the issuance of the Cascade Charter Township request for proposals for Township Legal Services. Move we approve. Support. Discussion? A quick question, Manager Sweezy, is there anything in our uh, draft RFP that asks potential law firms about potential conflicts? There does, yep. So the, one of the requirements in their proposal is to indicate any conflicts they foresee and how they deal with conflicts. Thank you. It's a motion by Treasurer Pierce, supported by Trustee Kessel, to approve the RFP as written on the agenda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> motion carried. Okay, thank you. 
Item 022-2021, consider Parks Committee recommendation for property purchase at 2965 Whitecliffe. Manager Swayze, can you provide us with a brief overview, um, kind of walk us through the facts? Yeah, sure. Brief usually isn't in my repertoire, but I'll definitely walk you through the facts. Um, so kind of an township... unfair, unfair <laughs> way to word it. So the Township Parks Committee met on February 16th, 2021 to discuss the idea of purchasing the property located at 2965 Wycliffe for a future park. So just to go over some facts of the property, the property is 3.86 acres. It's partially developed with a former church facility and the associated amenities for that facility, which include parking lot, so on and so forth. The Southern approximate 2.2 acres of the property are undeveloped and wooded. The property is bounded by Cascade Road to the west, Thorncrest Drive to the north, and Wycliffe Drive to the east and south. There's another home site on the block to the south of the subject property, which is approximately 0 0.53 acres. Uh, the rest of the block uh, is encompassed by the subject property. So the, the building on the property, the church building has not been inspected, uh, but the township used to hold elections in the building. Uh, I would say it's understood to be an adequate condition. Uh, I wouldn't say it's in great condition by any stretch of the imagination, um, but it was still usable at least the last time that we were in there. Uh, it's being marketed as a 6,120 square foot ranch style former church. So the property owner is a development company, uh, 2965 Wycliffe LLC, uh, which operates out of Grand Rapids. It was previously owned by New Day Community Church and the property was sold uh, to the development company by New Day Church on January 21st of 2020 for $349,000. Uh, because the property was previously tax exempt, we don't have a current uh, stated uh, state equalized value for it uh, or taxable value, uh, but that will be coming shortly as we're finalizing our 2021 rolls. The property is currently listed for sale by SVN Commercial Real Estate Advisors for $699,900. So at their February 16th, 21 uh, meeting, the Parks Committee unanimously supported the purchase of the property and requested that the recommendation be forwarded to the Township Board for consideration. So I included a couple of things in your, mem in your packet, uh, a memo from Community Development Director Peterson uh, related to the recommendation from the Parks Committee, uh, the agenda from that committee meeting as well, and then a mem memo that was prepared by myself at the request of Supervisor Lesperance outlining some of the uh, facts uh, surrounding the property. So the Parks Committee identified several pros and cons of the township acquiring the, the property uh, from the pro section. It could serve as a neighborhood park to the immediate area, uh, could fill many objectives in the park and rec master plan, such as an increase in neighborhood parks and convenient neighborhood locations. So it's located along and is connected to the existing pathway system and can serve as a traffic uh, trailhead park for that system. Uh, it has an existing bathroom and it has existing parking lot. Some of the cons identified is that there's steep topography of the property that will make some of it unusable. Uh, there's concerns that the price is too high. Uh, there's some low areas near the south end of the site. Uh, the immediate neighbors could be concerned about introducing a park uh, and the building may be need to be removed. Uh, there'd be costs associated with that as well. And then the committee had some ideas for future use, uh, including a trailhead for the pathway system, shelter, small playground, neighborhood pocket park, an education park where the township could use green ideas such as permeable paving, green building, building techniques and solar power, uh, and also thought that the township could possibly pursue grant funding uh, from organizations such as the Weggy or Fry Foundation. So uh, both the parks agenda memo and the township manager property memo, uh, you'll find references to the plans of the township uh, that the purchase of the property uh, could potentially address. Um, so I do wanna recommend, you know, you know, you probably noticed that on the agenda tonight, there is a closed session as well. So if the township board decides in the open session that they want to approve the pursuit of the property, uh, I'm recommending that the board then go into closed session to discuss negotiations. If the board does not vote to pursue the property, uh, the closed session isn't necessary. So as I mentioned, the listed purchase price of the subject property is $699,900 and the property last sold in January, 2020 for $349,000. 
Uh, if the township did decide to pursue this property, there are several funds that could be utilized for the purchase of the property. That includes the general fund. So the open space fund could be used, but only if the only if the property is utilized in accordance with the open space fund ballot language and the pathways fund could potentially be used as well, but only if the property is utilized in accordance with the pathway fund ballot language. Uh, so if the township board ultimately approves a purchase agreement, then we would need to make a budget amendment that would uh, need to be made to reflect the purchase. Uh, so with that uh, recommendation is to consider the parks committee recommendation for the property purchase at 2965 Wycliffe. Thank you. Discussion? Yeah, I have, I have some real key questions that I'm still a little not, don't have answers for. I am probably the biggest advocate for open space in parks, but I've also been very conscientious about being fiscally responsible. And uh, you know, I've told residents and voters that I'd be very fiscally responsible. So I just think that we haven't done our homework on this yet. So I have five key questions. The first is, what is the specific purpose of the property? We haven't identified that yet. I've heard open space. This does not qualify for open space. It, it's too small. It doesn't have natural features. Um, I've heard it. I mean, we could put playground equipment, swing sets, uh, campfires for bonfires, etc. So I think yet we haven't determined what the specific use is of the property. And I think that's really important for us to go to residents saying we did our homework, we know what the specific use is. The second thing is, how will this be paid for? I think it really needs to go to the finance committee to be asked and answered, how is it gonna be paid for? It's really not appropriate to use open space funds. Um, this is not a property you would designate as open space with only you know, a few acres. Uh, by the way, I, I've known Charlie and Sarah Homeyer who donated over a half a million dollars to the open space fund. I talked to Charlie this Saturday. He does not consider this property to be open space. So if we wanted to use any of the home iron money, of which we have about $380,000, it really doesn't fit. In terms of using um, pathway money, uh, I voted for pathways and we don't even have pathways to Pine Ridge School and, and Thornapple School yet. I think that would be a priority. We haven't finished our current paths yet. We still have to get the bridge uh, at Burton and Laraway, we've needed that to, to be finished on Laraway Lake, that the path, because we make residents walk in the road now, and I've done it four times in the last week, and there's so much snow that the path adjacent to the roadway, you, you have to walk in the middle of the road. So we have some other priorities. So I'm, I'm not sure quite how we'd pay for this. The general fund would be our most logical way, but we've got some big expenditures and priorities with Fire Station 1, which is the highest priority in the township, uh, potential Fire Station 3, We've got a water issue where we've got over 200 residents who have contaminated water. We may, you know, we're trying to get grants for that. So again, I think this needs to go to the finance committee for vetting in terms of how would we actually pay for it. And then the third is what is the public input process so far? We haven't had one and we've got an RFP outstanding for a consultant to work with us to prioritize projects such as this and to vet them out and I know that the DDA who did have money and paid for property to buy Tuffy Muffler, they had a very specific plan in use. They had a public process. And, you know, Grace, you had asked us last fall to table that to get more public input. And I think we need to potentially table this to get really good public input. Not to say yes or no, but to really have this vetted properly. And I think the fourth is, you know, is this good use of taxpayer money? $700,000 for three acres. I look at, for example, when we bought Phase property, which became Peace Park, we paid approximately $20,000 an acre for that, which is 200 acres. Uh, this is almost $230,000 an acre, more than 10 times as much. When we got Burton Park, we paid 10 to $15,000 per acre. Again, this is 15 times that amount. And that was an 80 acre park. And we had voter approval. And actually the best thing we, we could do is, is come up with a park millage and ask the voters, should we have a park millage? And that, cause I'm all for pocket parks, put, but put them in a lot of neighborhoods. And that way we'd have a funding source and we'd have approval from the voters. And then my last question is, you know, not only is this good use of taxpayer money at, at this cost, which I know is, is exorbitant at 700,000, but 
how much is it going to cost to really tear the building down? We know the building's really not in great shape. I don't know if we need it. We've got the Wisner Center for the public. We've got the library. We've got township offices. We've got a gazebo at the recreation park with bonfire capability. We've got gazebo at Tassel Park. So, you know, that the building's probably going to have to really be looked at and evaluated, and it's probably going to be a teardown. Not necessarily, but, you know, do we really need it since we've got these other facilities? So I just think we owe it to all the residents to really, you know, do our homework a little more. I'm not saying it's the right or the wrong thing to do in terms of buying this property. I'm saying we just have our homework to do. And with that, I'd, I'd probably think that maybe tabling this would, would make the most sense at this point. I just want to get some input on that. Sure, Thank please. you, Trustee McDonald. Trustee Shipley? Yeah, I've got to echo exactly what Tom was saying. You know, we have two parcels that are adjoining the tassel that we bought for future uh, uh, development. And I would hate to see this become another episode like what we had on Thornapple River Drive when we bought a residential house and had to tear it down. We had large expenses because of asbestos in it. Um, and I, I think that Tom's right on target with a lot of his comments. I don't want a, the township to buy a pig and a poke, not knowing what we want to do with it or how much we're going to spend. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. I have a comment. I will say those are all, oh, go ahead. Clerk Slater, please. Um, I agree with Tom. I believe that um, we need to do a little bit more background work on this. I like the property very, very much. Um, I think it would make a great little park playground. Uh, I have no problem with that. I'm no market genius, but I think 100% markup on three acres in a year is a tad steep. Thank you, Clerk Slater. <laughs> Can I comment? Yes, Clerk uh, Tr Treasurer Pierce. I think the uh, Parks Committee ought to do some homework um, before the Finance Committee gets involved in it to, to be proactive, kind of identify areas in the township that are, are in need of pocket parks and, and sort of broad broadband that to us so that we can take a look at the whole picture and not just one isolated incident. I agree. And I'd like to get Trustee Timmy's take on the, on the purchase price. I think it's a little high. Good. Give me a little time to work on that. <laughs> Trustee Castle. Uh, ben, don't we have, we, uh, if my recollection serves me right, we bought a piece of property uh, near the fire station too, did we not? And we never developed that. We were gonna make that into a pocket park. Um, I think we uh, refer to it as uh, the Manus property. Uh, do you recall? Isn't that in our inventory now? So that, so that is in our inventory. That, that process happened before my time here. Uh, I understand that the township actually turned down the opportunity to buy uh, a, a, or, or take a larger piece of land. Uh, and really right now there's just a small piece of land on that corner uh, where we have uh, a bench and, and maybe some, some gardens. But I don't, think we, I don't think we have a large piece of property in the inventory there. Uh, but I would need to double check on that. Do we have, um, it, I can't remember where the other piece is, but don't we have one other property that we haven't done anything with that's in inventory? Uh, and geez, I can't remember. Up, is it yeah, up we, in that general area? Of so we have, a, we have a couple pieces of property in our inventory. So uh, there is one uh, kind of in the, the neighborhood by the cemetery um, uh, a rather large piece of parcel that uh, floods pretty bad. Uh, we have that. Uh, we did purchase a parcel on Whitneyville Road as you get closer to the uh, bridge over I-96. Uh, that was in consideration for station number two uh, for a while before we uh, stopped at the current place. Uh, we currently do have one of our emergency sirens uh, on that pole um, in the uh, neighborhood on Thornapple River Drive, south of the Township Hall as you get closer to the rec park. 
Uh, we did piece up, pick up a single piece of parse, uh, property there a couple of years ago on tax sale uh, to provide access to Trout Creek if we potentially needed to do uh, work there sometime. So we do have various pieces of uh, property that's owned in the township and the Parks Committee did go through an exercise again prior to my time in the township. So it's been uh, close to a decade now where they, they did look at each one of those parcels for potential uh, park uh, uh, to potentially put in a park. Uh, I know at that time they decided not to pursue any of those. I don't know what the reason, reasoning was behind it. Uh, I'm like Tom, it's an excellent piece of property, uh, but I think there needs to be a little more work done before we can vote to purchase it at that kind of purchase price, not knowing what else would be involved in the development of the property and the tearing down of the building if, if that was to be done. So whether it's the Parks Committee formulating a plan or bringing it to the Personnel Finance Committee to figure out how to finance it, uh, I don't think we're at that point yet. With that, I, I just to keep this moving, I, I would make a motion that we table this for further evaluation of the specific use of the property. And then once we determine that, how it's, how it's paid for um, before we can really move forward. I support that. And I just wanted to make one comment too, uh, along to piggyback on what you have said. I think those are all really good, responsible process questions. Uh, they make a lot of sense, especially considering it's a it's a big ticket item, not necessarily compared to other projects that the township has taken on, but it's still a, a big price. Um, the one thing I would note, I was talking to someone who didn't live in Cascade, but is in Cascade a lot, and he had a really interesting observation uh, about Cascade that was consistent with uh, there's overwhelming resident support for preserving Cascade's kind of character and green space, especially while it's still available. And part of the balance, the tricky balance with purchasing property is the due diligence that goes with it that takes time, but also the opportunity of when there is property available. And there's always this tension between the two. And what he said um, is that when you look at other nearby areas, the die has already been cast. Um, the, the city technically immediately um, west of Cascade and up north. The die's already been cast. We've got a rapidly growing area and we are one of the most desirable and fastest growing townships in that area. Every developer wants to get in Cascade. But at the same time, there's a special reason why we choose to live here. And, and that's because of this green space, the trees, the river, and there's a real value of focusing on what residents want and what they've spoken about. And his comment was, you know, the die has already been cast in those areas. There's no turning back. But Cascade is at a unique time where we're on the cusp and the die is not yet cast in Cascade. And so I, I appreciate the, 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 the tension between due diligence and an opportunity that pops up. Um, but I just think it's worth noting that residents have continually and consistently expressed a desire and there's also been a continuous kind of piece by piece focus by, I would say at the township level, this hasn't been a priority. And I'm just excited because it's a unique parcel with overwhelming resident support. And my hope, and I think the parks committee as a whole would be that once the parks committee is able to come up with answers to these specific questions, that we are able to take advantage of, uh, of this great opportunity while we still have it to help maintain the character that we so love and that we, about Cascade. Because once it's gone, it's gone. You can't get it back. That we're on our third car dealership. We're headed in that direction. But once it's gone, you cannot get it back. Thank you. Yep. And I would just say that for as for part of the motion, we ought to also, or part of the evaluation, we also ought to consider should we have a millage request where we take it to the voters and ask the voters, do you, would you support a park millage? Uh, specifically for the intentions of buying open space and pocket parks in various neighborhoods. I'm sure overwhelmingly that the people in this neighborhood would want that property, the Church on the Hill. I'm not sure if people, you know, who, who lived in other areas would without them having an opportunity for something similar. So, you know, I, I just think, again, we need to go back and do our homework. Absolutely. And I would just say that that's a great question, great focus, but the two should not be linked together just because of a, from a timing perspective as far as one issue. 
So that's a motion to table this agenda item uh, made by, was it Trustee McDonald? Yep. Okay. Supported by Trustee Kessel. Kessel? Okay. Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next agenda item would be public comments. Deputy Manager Fast. Thank you. If anyone would like to address the board, please raise your hand and your microphone will be unmuted. If you are joining us via telephone, please press star nine and your hand will be raised. We ask that you limit your comments to three minutes and please clearly state your name and address for the record. And we do have a raised hand. And this is Craig Merlin. Welcome, Mr. Merlin. Please proceed. Thank you. Um, I want to at least make a comment on the RFP for legal services. Um, a couple of things pop out to me about that. Having been a lawyer who has been on both sides of these kinds of beauty contests or what they're called in the legal profession of interviews, the first is we have to recognize that we that there is a divided board to some degree at Cascade. There have been more four to three votes in the last three months than there have been in the last five years, I think. Um, there is no reason that a law firm needs five weeks to respond to an RFP. When I have been in two law firms, we could do it in a few days, much less a week or much less five, I mean, clearly not five weeks. And secondly, the qualification that I think we should be looking for is a qualification of real, off the top of your head, legal expertise. And that's not listed in the key aspects. It's sort of mildly pointed out. Um, having been a senior partner at two law firms. I would say that 10% of the work I did was probably worth 10 times what my billable rate was or more. And more than 50% was sort of commodity work that didn't, wasn't worth my billable rate. The key we need from a lawyer is to have the ability to answer off the top of their head quickly what the answer questions that arise. I am not sure the current process focuses on that level of expertise rather than saying, oh, I think it's X, let me go back and have someone research it. When I was in house as a general counsel, I would go to a firm with great expertise, get the answer off the top of their head and then if I wanted to confirm some aspect of it, I went to another law firm at a lower billable rate and got the research done. Um, the legal profession is not like an engineering firm uh, or other consultants that we might hire. I think we have to be very sensitive as Supervisor Lesperin said to conflicts and it put a great focus on that. We need in the process to ask very tough questions that require immediate responses that work, that address particular factual hypotheticals and issues. Um, and I think the public should be involved in that. The public should be able to see that process at work. Right now, the process says that the committee will give a recommendation well, in a divided board, I think at least two finalists should be recommended. And the finalists should be chosen from firms that have significant expertise representing multiple chartered townships. Um, so I would have a process. I would love to see the board ask tough questions to those two finalists in an open interview. And I think the public should be able to submit written questions 
that could be asked if in fact the board deemed them reasonable questions based on hypothetical fact situations. This process seems like the same one that was used to effectively hire the same law firm that had been used for years. And that law firm has a huge conflict with respect to the PFAS situation. And I'm not sure based on the last three months, it has given the board the kind of legal advice that ought to be giving. Now, not to say that's gonna be the final firm, but we also heard with the SAD on Thornapple, Cliff Bloom's firm having a conflict as it slid from the River Owners Association to representing us. Both of those situations should have been addressed and identified up front. So I just think the process could be much shorter. We could cut a month off of it. If we focus on the committee meeting the month before, and I also think that then that committee either should have its hearings or interviews open for the public to listen, or we should have real deliberation at the board level with at least two finalists. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Merlin. Can I respond to that a little bit? Judge Pierce? Um, two members of the personal finance committee are both lawyers. Uh, it's not our first rodeo. I, I think we can we can kind of handle this. That's all. Thank you. Okay, we do have another resident with a raised hand. That is Keely Shea. Ms. Shea, please proceed. Thank you. Um, so first of all, I just in listening, I wanna thank Mr. Merlin. I feel like he is one of the few that is actually, and I'm not talking, there are a few on the board as well, but that are standing up for the residents. And I, I'm really kind of astounded to hear Mr. Pierce in his reply to Mr. Merlin, who is a resident and a taxpayer of Cascade Township, who actually our, our residents voted you in, um, I, I think with the belief that you were going to care and listen to what we had to say. And for you to just say, we've got this, thanks. I, I'm sorry, that's, that's not okay. And that's not even what I was going to speak to tonight, but actually it is. This, I, I since our, the meeting two weeks ago, honestly, after that, I think most of us who, and I, referring to the sad, literally, it was so sad, the special assessment district, um, Thornapple River, those of us that spoke up just not even in exactly what, what Mr. McDonald said tonight, referring to the park decision. Actually, I, I thought it was, I agreed completely when he said that $700,000 is exorbitant for a park and we should at least get the residents input. Well, what you voted to pass, four of you voted through last two weeks ago was a $1.3 million assessment on just 301 residences in Cascade Township. So I'm trying to do the math here. 1.3 million for 300 residents or $700,000 for, for an entire township. And I, I, so anyway, there's that point. And but I think the, the bigger point is, it's not really even a, just about this. It is what Mr. Merlin has pointed out and what those of us who are starting to open our eyes and look in our own backyards, as I have shared with you, I, I didn't even know who any of our representatives were for the last 15 years I've lived in Cascade. But I started to be concerned about what's going on in the world. So I started looking in my own backyard and 
I just want to say to you, I want to ask you actually, will you please, please ask yourselves why you chose to become representatives for Cascade Township of the people. And it, it really is, it's been, well, it's been very eye-opening to see, and we are going to continue moving forward with this. Um, we have a group of residents who are coming together and forming our own committee to hold our township board responsible and accountable. So I have one question. Well, I have a few questions, but my first question is, so I understand township manager Swayze has not been elected. He's actually been hired, but I wanna know who oversees manager Swayze's decisions. Where is the oversight here? Thank you, Ms. Shea. And we can talk, the board, so technically it's the board and um, appreciate your comments. And we are happy uh, to speak with you and other residents, both at the meetings, but also um, outside the meetings. Okay, thank you. Um, I do have a, a direct question then for manager Swayze about the meeting that occurred two weeks ago. Uh, manager Swayze, can you tell us what the requirements are for announcing the public um, Zoom meeting on um, the website, what the requirements are for that? Oh, sorry, Manager Swayze, if you could give us. Yep, so the requirement is for um, the uh, link uh, to be available as part of the agenda. Uh, so the agenda has specific information on it. Uh, it's that front page, cover page of the agenda. Um, I guess off the cuff, I don't know the exact words that are in the, um, the, the language that the state of Michigan passed at the time, uh, but the front page of our, uh, our packet is published on Friday, contains all the information that's required in order to hold a virtual meeting. Right, are you aware, because I sent a note um, in the, chat feature at 7 p.m. last or two weeks ago, sorry, I keep saying last week, that the link to the public meeting um, was not published on the front page where the calendar was. Are, are you aware of that? No, nope, I was not aware of that, but I do know that it was published as part of the packet that went out uh, on Friday uh, and was available all the way up until when the meeting started. So Stephanie Fast did not make you aware of that because she responded to my note that it wasn't up. And I, I actually said that we need to fix this because I'm sure there are people that aren't able to get onto the meeting because the steps that you have to go through to get to that agenda, that's not easy. So I'm Supervisor just... Lesperance, I could answer that question if you would allow me to speak. Please. Um, the reference that Mrs. Shea is making is, um, in an effort to put that link everywhere that we possibly could, there was a Facebook event that was created for the board meeting. So in addition to having it on the website and pushed out on a Facebook post, um, there was an events page um, that was pushed out on the Facebook and we neglected to put the link at that third location. Um, and I, I'm going to recommend that we just remove the event page. I think it might be confusing residents more than anything else to have so many different touchstones as to where they can find that information. The Facebook posts direct people right back to the website, which is where they can get the links from. But you said the third place. So you're saying the first place was on the agenda. The second will, was Facebook. And, but before that, you said you tried to get it out to as many places as possible. So you're saying, so there were only two places. One was Facebook and then one was on the agenda. Well, I, Mrs. Shea, I was referring to three different locations on the internet. So my point is you could go to Facebook, you could go to a Facebook post, or you could go to a Facebook event. Those well, were the three I was referring okay. to. So I'm just going to read something then that I, because I did a little research on this because it didn't seem oh, right. Wait, Ms. Shea, I am sorry to cut you off. It's such a balance. So 
Well, I just want to share, I think this is really important because I found on the Michigan Townships Association, there's a law about this. And it actually says that notices for electronic meetings must be posted. Any notice of a meeting of a township public body is required by the OMA to be posted on the township's notice board, window, wall, or board. Mm -hmm. It says if it directly or indirectly maintains an official website that includes monthly or more frequent updates, a public meeting agendas or minutes, the, the public body must post notice of meeting held electronically on a portion of the website that is fully accessible to the public. And then it's it goes on to state. So my point is this was not adhered to it. Ms. Shea, I hear you. I will tell, and I would like, I, I am happy and willing to talk with you and any residents um, outside of the meeting and I encourage residents public comments at these meetings. I will say we at it, just be, to be fair to other residents, we've got to stop this particular conversation, but I guarantee I, 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 it is duly noted that this township should and will follow all parts of the Open Meeting Act, Mo Open Meetings Act. And I fully agree with the importance of that and we will do that. That is a priority and it's non-negotiable. So uh, I encourage you to contact us directly. I, I am happy to speak with you offline and I apologize for cutting you off. Uh, All right, thank, thank you, you for your comments. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment, Ms. Bast? We do. Uh, telephone number ending in 3551. Please proceed. Hi, this is uh, Al Pennington, 2678 Cascade Springs. Uh, we live in the Cascade Woods neighborhood and are down the road from the potential uh, park that was discussed this evening and uh, are very supportive of you know, taking a step back and uh, thinking what that actually would look like rather than moving along really quickly with it. So uh, just uh, wanted to offer some feedback there. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Okay, Supervisor Lesperance, uh, Craig Merlin has raised his hand again. Mr. Merlin? Now I'm unmuted, okay. Um, I would like to respond just briefly to Treasurer Pierce and to Clerk Slater with her uh, laugh at um, apparently, if you look at your facial expression and your expression laughing after Treasurer Pierce's response to my comment, I found that condescending and very irritating. I also would comment to Treasurer Pierce and to the rest of the board that when you say you've got it, 2021 is different than 2010 or 2015. There is a level of distrust and frustration in this community that got at least two new trustees elected last year. And part of that is the fact that we as citizens rarely see this board deliberate. We see it make decisions where apparently the deliberation occurred at a private meeting of one of the committees of the board. And somehow it ended up with seven to zero votes so often in the past number of years. I would like as a citizen who was frustrated with the fouling warehouse who was frustrated with the gathering space, who was frustrated that with the special assessment district, I never heard the board deliberate on why they viewed the assessment to be fair, just, and equitable as it is spoken of in the resolution that you approve. I only heard that it was the normal thing done but you certified that that's what it was and that the benefits that the parcels received were equal to the assessments. Um, so I don't hear deliberations. That's why with this attorney selection, 
I would like to have the public have the opportunity to hear some of the questions being asked and to be able to determine that we actually have a real expert. And I don't care who it is, so long as it's someone with who is not this morning present at the airport as the airport's attorney um, or who slid so quickly from a proposal on the special assessment district into our council. Did he ever, did this board ever consider alternatives to having a special assessment district that would be in the best interest of the township as a whole? I heard, I was at the meetings where those resolutions passed. I never heard it. That's, Do you have any what, board members? Oh, excuse that's me. what I think the public needs to have to have confidence that the board is making the decisions in the proper manner and in a manner that's legally correct. I have done some research on the laws and I have a list of situations where legality may not have been fully achieved. I also would look at the township administration building and I would look forward to a full presentation on how much it cost versus how much it was supposed to cost when the renovations were first approved by this board. I think you'll find the amount has increased by probably close to a million dollars or at least 700,000. Thank you, that's, Mr. Merlin. That's enough, yes, thank you. And would any members of the board like to respond to any of the public comments or have any thoughts? Do we have any other public comments? Ms. Shea has raised her hand again. Okay, Ms. Shea, this is nothing personal, but I gotta keep you to the time limit. This is easy. I'm just going to second everything Mr. Merlin said. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments, Ms. Bast? There's no further public comment at this time, Supervisor Lesbrent. Thank you. There being no public comments, we will now move on to manager comments. Great, thank you. I just have a couple items that I wanted to uh, review. So uh, we are finalizing the walkthrough over at the new Township Administration oh, okay. Building. Manager, so I'm sorry to interrupt. It's hard with the Zoom. I, I think uh, Treasurer Pierce has his hand raised, so I hate to cut you off, but can we go quickly back to Yep, and then no we'll problem. bring you right back. Thank you. I just want to apologize to uh, Mr. Merlin and the citizens of the township for my my comments. It, it came out of pride from being a former general counsel of the New York Stock Exchange Company where I've done several RFPs over my career of 40 plus years in legal practice. And it, it just hit me wrong. And I got a text from my wife that said, take a breath. So I did. And I apologize and I hope you uh, understand. Thank you. Thank you, Treasurer Pierce. It's a tough balance. And a lot of people care on both sides. Manager Swayze, please continue. I apologize for the interruption. Yep, so we are working towards a move into the new Township Administration Building. So uh, the building department is actually already there. Uh, they vacated their uh, rental space uh, over in the Centennial Park area at the end of uh, January uh, and are now in the building. Uh, the rest of the Township Administrative staff will be moving starting uh, March 15th uh, and we're marching towards that process. Uh, Stephanie and the communications team are working on getting that information out to the public uh, so they'll understand that there'll be, uh, be some minor disruption and availability that week. Uh, but that how they'll be able to contact us going forward. Of course, phone numbers and email addresses won't uh, change. Uh, the, the pandemic has shown that a lot of our residents can interact with us uh, remotely uh, and nothing will change there. Uh, but in order to come see us in person, there'll be a new address. So working on rolling that information out to the public. Uh, and I also wanted to let everybody know that we did receive a resignation on the Planning Commission this week, uh, Lisa Crater. Uh, has indicated that she needs to resign uh, her spot on the planning commission uh, due to uh, work commitments that she has starting a new job. So I just wanted to thank Lisa for her years of service on the planning commission uh, and wish her well in her uh, new job. And that's all I have. 
Thank you. Any board comments? Shipley does. Trustee Shipley? Once again, as always, I want to thank anybody that's out there in the uh, audience. And I really, really, really crave for us to be able to meet again face to face like what we had before this pestilence hit our country. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Clerk Slater. Yeah, it's a small thing. I just want to publicly thank you, Supervisor, for repeating the names of who made the motions and second for all the items of business in our meetings. That's very helpful. Oh, thanks, Clerk Slater. We'll get there. You've been very patient. Any other public? McDon Trustee McDonald? Yeah, I just want to tip our hat to uh, beloved prior uh, board member, Jack Lewis, who passed away last year. Uh, I was on the planning commission with Jack years ago when we didn't allow car dealerships in Cascade Township. And I'll never forget Jack teaching me the lesson of how precedents are so important when you set a precedent. And he said, if we allow, if we change in the planning commission and allow uh, car dealerships, it's not going to be the last one. And he was right. And, and the good news is, is that we've done a great job of having good landscaping ordinances and, and the dealerships have done a great job and, and done great landscaping along with themselves. But I'll never forget Jack teaching us and saying, remember that if we approve this one, it's not going to be the last one. And of course, we've seen in the last decade, several, uh, several car dealerships come in and they've all been, been excellent and contributed to the township. But again, it just gets back to how important it is once we set a precedent. And uh, so again, I, I thank Jack uh, up in the sky. Thank you, Trustee McDonald. Any other comments? I would just like to thank both the board and the public. And uh, we can't always be on the same page, but certainly we all want um, it to be a public and, and substantive conversation because these are all important issues that directly affect all of us. So we are at the most basic level of, of government, neighbor serving neighbor. And um, it may not be the smoothest, but it's super important that we continue to have these uh, public discussions. Thank you. Move to adjourn. Motion by Trustee McDonald, and I'm sure there's a second. A second. By Clerk Slater, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you.